All right, so today we're gonna take a radio like this, a six channel radio, and we're gonna show you how to, you can take some of these switches that are two position switches and take two auxiliary channels and make it into like eight auxiliary channels. So let's check it out. What I wanna show is how you can, again, with two channels, do all kinds of stuff and I'm going to show you specifically the mixes in a DX6i or other spectrum radios and how you can get that set up. One of the first things I wanted to show is uh, Bardwell recently did a, a video on using pre-arm and at one point in the video said, hey, for pre-arm you, you, you have to give up two auxiliary channels to do that. Those of you out there who are clever may be thinking, you did that with two aux channels. Is there like a clever way you could do it with one aux channel through like complicated mixing? So in this case, let's check this out. So right here I have on arm, I have auxiliary one. And you can see as I switch the arming switch here that my quad goes into the arming mode. But it's not actually going to arm because it has to be also in the pre-arm position. So when I just hit the arming switch, you can see it skips over the pre-arm position, so it will not arm. Now I have my aileron dual rate set up in mixing, which I'll show here in a second, that once I hit the aileron dual rate and then I go to arm, well then it's in pre-arm and also within the arming flag. And that will arm the quad. Now when you're flying, you can turn off the dual rate and it will take it out of, um, you don't need pre-arming at that point, but it's still armed. You'd have to make sure your arming is, is far enough apart here. So this is a trick I use for uh, this Revolt OSD where you only have a little amount of flash space. So I initially arm it, get up you know, in the air, get acclimated a little bit, and then I'll switch the pre-arm switch up and that will restart doing the black box uh, recording and logging. If I want to turn black box recording and logging off, I just turn that down. If I go back up again, then I record. And then obviously to disarm with this down or up, I would just disarm it. So that's that. To set that up, so let's look here at the mix design for that. So I will go into my settings. My button's a little sticky here, so you have to Bear with me, and I'll go into mix, and that's the mix uh, setup you need for that. Notice you have gear switch, which is the arming switch up top, acting on gear switch with the rate, the dual rate for aileron, right down here, the dual rate aileron switch. When it's down, it's negative 30%, and when it's up, it's 100%, it's 100 and it's not acting on any trim. Now, we can do the same thing with flaps. So the flap switch is auxiliary two. And when I flip that, you can see that it goes into, you know, from one position to the next. And I don't necessarily have this set up for anything specific on this, but you have basically a two position switch. But you can turn that into a three position switch by again, setting up a mix with your dual rate on elevator. And now you have two different positions there. And you can see whether one's this is down, then your flaps, and you can make that a uh, farther variability if, if you want. We'll show that here in a second. Or with this up, now you get full range. Now in beta flight, which is great, is you can add multiple ranges here as much as you want. So you can have a, you know, a range over here and a range over here so that whenever this tick is in any of those spots, it will activate, for example, here angle mode. And the reason I have that turned on is so that when I go into fail safe, it automatically pushes auxiliary two to set point of 1500. It will hold that for three seconds and uh, with a reduced throttle percentage, and then it will drop. So it kind of levels off, holds for three seconds, and then it will drop. So going back to here, you can see just here's another part of the auxiliary one. You know, when I'm disarmed, going back to auxiliary one, when I'm disarmed, and if I have th flip this down, 
now it's disarmed, my beeper will activate. And it's up, beeper will not activate. So I can't activate the beeper while I'm armed. But I, when do I, I never want to activate the beeper when I'm armed. So I think that's, that works for me. It's only when I'm disarmed, crashed on the ground or, or something, and then I want to try to find it, I can use this switch. So, you know, I'm getting a bunch of functions. I'm getting a, a pre-arm out of that. I'm getting a black box trigger out of this, and I'm getting a beeper function just out of one auxiliary, and then just using dual rates in a mix. So let's show on the flap switch the mix for that. So it's flaps, acting on flaps. When it's down for the elevator dual rate, it's at negative uh, 75% and 100% when it's up. So I don't have this set right now on this transmitter, but you can use this same thing to set your, so you can do in-flight PID tuning. So for example here, I can bring this up and I can have my aileron switch be the pre-arm to pre-arm it or turn pre-arm off for a tuning. And then when it's armed, you can see here for example, I am telling it to use follow auxiliary one and I'm going to be adjusting my pitch D when it's down and when my aileron dual rate is up, I'm going to be adjusting my roll D. Now, it needs to know which way it's going to adjust, up or down. So I'm going to use my flap switch for that. Let me hit save here. If I go back to modes, you can see with the switch up, I get full flaps movement. Now I'd have to obviously turn off angle mode or set that up a different way so I'm not uh, switching into angle mode. But, you know, with this switch up, I'm getting full movement. With the elevator dual rate down, I'm only getting a partial movement. And honestly, if you go into the mix design and if you'd set this, and if you set this to negative 100%, What happens there is when this switch, when the elevator dual rate is down, you can see on the screen, it negates the, the flap switch altogether. So I can tell it to be, okay, I'm only going to be on, adjust the D term on the pitch. I'm armed, I'm flying. I'm gonna do either the pitch adjustment or the roll adjustment. Right now, my auxiliary two is at 1500 because it's disabled here. It's not going to go up or down. So it doesn't matter if I move this up or move this down. If I want my pitch D term to go up, I make sure this is up. Then I hit my switch. That will make the auxiliary two go high, as you can see here. So the D term will start to go up. If I want to then stop, then I can fly it. If I want the D term to go back down a little bit. And usually what I'll do is have the PIDs in your OSD so you can see it happening as you're flying. And then I can do that, disable it. Now, that, I'm sorry, this was on the roll. If I wanted to do pitch, I drop this down to pitch. Okay, it's disabled, doesn't matter if it's up or down. I want my D term to go up on pitch now This in this example. And I'm going to say, okay, go ahead and do that. Now my D term is gonna go up on pitch. And what you can do to test that your adjustments, as shown here, are working in that after you have everything set, is you can go into the PID tuning tab and go ahead and toggle your adjustments to occur. So if I go ahead and click it on, and it should be adjusting now, what you do have to do is hit the refresh button. And if I keep hitting the refresh button here, you'll see my pitch D term is going up. If I toggle it now to start to go down, you'll see it starts to go down. And if I turn it off so it doesn't adjust at all, and keep hitting refresh, you can see it will stop adjusting. If I want my roll to go up, you can see my roll D term now starts to go up as well. So usually what I'll do is I'll adjust my P term on pitch and roll, 
Yes, I do have to plug back in because I only have a six channel radio. And Joshua Barba has a great video on how if you have more channels and three position switches that you can set it up that you can choose to adjust your roll, pitch, yaw, P, I, and D all on a couple switches. And I'll link to that in the upper right hand corner. So do check that out uh, if you have that availability in an advanced radio like a Tyrannus. Um, he has a, a, a great setup for that. So you can see you can do a lot of different things here. I can have you know it angle mode activate at different times. I can use my adjustments here as well. And I can do all that stuff just with six channels. So if you have a limited radio, you don't need to go out and buy a really expensive radio with tons of channels. Just look at your mixing. I'm sure people have different radios that have different mixing, but if you have a spectrum, it's going to be somewhat like this. But um, you know, get creative, use those radios, and uh, you know, with the tools in Betaflight, you can get a lot done for six channels, pit tuning and pre-arming and, and all kinds of stuff. All right, everybody, thanks, and I hope this helped.